to create a new way of doing mainstream media, which is people powered and um, accountable to people and basically distributed by people as well. I'm Alisa, I'm at the Logan Symposium right now and I'm talking to Nafis Ahmed. In your talk where you were stated that you are trying to go away as far as you can from mainstream media now. Why do you think this is important? I don't think the dichotomy between mainstream media and alternative media is helpful. That you have a mainstream which is very corporatized, then you've got this editorial self-censorship, um, you know, you've got this structural problems in the media, all these kinds of issues. Um, and at the same time, in alternative media, okay, you've got some great work being done, but sometimes you've also got stuff which isn't credible, conspiracy theories. So you get, you get this mix. So how do you bridge this divide? So for me, my approach was to remain to some extent anchored within the mainstream. So I managed to secure two columns at two mainstream outlets. One was I write a column for uh, Motherboard, which is Vice's science magazine. And I also write a weekly column for Middle East Eye. Doing that and still doing general freelance stuff, but at the same time trying to use crowdfunding to fund investigations that I know are not going to get commissioned anywhere else. Um, and I would say that most of the stories that I write probably won't get, I, well, number one, I wouldn't have the resources to write them if I didn't have crowdfunding to back me. Um, and number two, I wouldn't be able to get them published anywhere in the mainstream. Um, and they wouldn't have even got commissioned very likely. And as, as a freelancer, you know, you have the experience of pitching to people and trying to kind of like make the story fit into some kind of strange editorial priorities and it can be very torturous and often results in nothing. So the model that I ended up going for was, you know, I've got this kind of mainstream kind of background or, or a little bit of mainstream access, um, but I, I really focused on the crowdfunding and the crowdfunding um, has been pretty interesting so far for the last year. We've raised about $30,000. We've done that through this website called patreon.com, which is basically a subscription model where you pay creators, mostly artists use it, um, and you pay them, either you pay them per item created. So every time they create something, a little bit of money, however much you choose, will go to the uh, creator or you can make it monthly. So I made mine monthly so that I can give, I guess, value for money in a way. So I can produce more work in, in a month rather than people paying for art school. Um, and I let people pay however much they want. You know, they can pay a dollar um, or they can pay, you know, $50 or whatever. And so you have a whole range of, and some people will pay for a month and then they'll cancel because they only want to pay a one-off donation. So that's cool as well. Um, and that model has worked. So with $30,000, we've done at Insurge Intelligence uh, 37 uh, independent investigations. Most of them are long form investigations. Um, some of them are quite complex, some of them are quite dense. Um, and what's been extraordinary about it is that many of them have not just gone viral, but they've actually been picked up in the mainstream. I mean, I did one story about declassified documents that had just come out of the Pentagon. And these documents basically showed that the Pentagon, um, Saudi Arabia, various other Gulf states and Turkey were financing uh, extremist rebels in Syria, um, knowing that there was a risk it would lead to the rise of an ISIS type entity. And yet it continued. What's interesting is the first person that put it out wasn't in Surge. It was a guy called Brad Hoff, the former US Marine and also an independent journalist um, who basically, he, he first found the documents and um, wrote a blog post on his, on his own publication called uh, the Levant Report. So we did a further investigation based on what he did and kind of went a bit deeper, contextualized it. And then we put the story out. Um, and the story was eventually um, picked up across the media. Um, and not everywhere, so basically we got some coverage in Salon, in The Guardian. Um, um, in Germany we made national headlines. So we got, and we got picked up on German national TV. 
A lot of the big newspapers covered it. It's not, and what's interesting about this model is that it's not anything that we've done to make it go viral, except write the story and put it out. We didn't like advertise, people did the rest. So I think what's interesting is, is that every step of the way, you've got people financing, you've got independent journalists doing the, the hard work, the graft, um, and then you've got this process of the, of the technology, which is in the world we live in now, where you've got social media, you've got an opportunity to level the playing field a little bit in terms of what people are reading and sharing. Um, and that has kind of forced the mainstream media to, to, to actually have to take notice of stories that they, that there's some stories you, can't, you just can't bury. And that forces people to take notice. And also it puts on the radar of journalists who might otherwise not want to touch something. It makes it something that everyone's talking about. And so, okay, maybe we should talk about this because everyone's talking about it. We're only at the beginning of this. It's a big experiment. Um, but I think it shows what can be done and that there's huge potential to not just kind of say, okay, we're going to create a new alternative media, but to create a new way of doing mainstream media, which is people powered and um, accountable to people and basically distributed by people as well. Thank you very much for answering our questions. So this was Alisa with Nafis Ahmed from the Logan Symposium. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You cannot have journalism without uh, morality. You have to understand what you are looking at and why you think certain things are important.